بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد وهبت في الله السلام عليكم رحمة الله وبركاته حياكم الله جميعا The Prophet صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم said Islam began strange and will return as something strange so give glad tidings to the stranger this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is immense in its import and so relevant for us throughout all time, but especially today in the time that we're living. And that's because the more you try to adhere to the sunnah, that you find that there's more opposition. And even in our short lifespans, you can see how times change and how the situation is in flux, meaning it's not always the same. Sometimes you see that people are accepting, it seems like they're accepting the sunnah more. And then there's sometimes when there's actually huge backlashes. And really what I see is a trend, which is fascinating and horrifying as well, but it shows us that Ahlul Sunnah has to really uh, go forward in propagating the Sunnah, Walau Kari al Bid'ah, is that you see what we've seen is a trend. Now, look at this, and then we're going to go into what some of the Salaf said about this Hadith. But I just want us to, to think about this, because it's relevant for our lives, it's relevant for our situation. <clears throat> look at what happened with this uh, after 9-11 and after several major events like this, how the people of Bid'ah, especially the extremists, the Tekfiris and the Jihadis, meaning these people who their whole minhaj is based on a non-shari understanding of Tekfir and a non-shari understanding of Jihad. That's the simplistic way of describing it. So these individuals raise their head. And for a while, a lot of youth were deceived. Look at how ISIS propagated their message and how many youths and others from around the world thought that this was it. So they made hijra to them and they were destroyed in so many various ways of being destroyed. However, we know they're still there and they probably will arise, uh, unfortunately, sooner than later. But they have, I think more so largely been discredited for a while a lot of people were confused a lot of people were on the fence and so forth about their situation so now what we see is a major backlash and we see a lot of the other groups of bida that have closer more in common with the people of irja meaning the people who don't believe iman is affected by sin so you see a huge rise now of progressives and modernists and people who speak strange about the Sharia and, and negate the Sharia or almost just totally deny the Sharia. You see that they have risen and say, hey, we told you about those extremists. So, you know, people tend to go swing, as they say on the political spectrum, from to the right to the left. They don't know how to be in the middle. OK, so now there's a huge backlash from progressives and others, and they are gaining more ground because many more Muslims are being secularized around the world. I'm not just even talking about the West. I'm not talking about the, the extreme uh, situation that we find in America and the people leaving the religion and apostatizing, but I'm talking about the raising of the head of many people who are now, who, who are the spokespeople, you know, uh, Sufis that are very uh, progressive and liberal in their their understanding, even so much so, and then they, at the same time, even some of them have in common with the uh, right-wing politicians in the West. So this is a very strange thing. And then Ahl Sunnah is under the microscope, again, from that perspective, as being too extreme, too, too harsh, too super. So what we see is this, we see this danger in how the sunnah becomes uh, strained. So my advice to my brothers and sisters is really learn your deen. When you learn your deen and you have more and more tools, then you can see 
through the smoke screen. So now we see many more uh, people of bid'ah and innovation, they're raising their heads. Look at all these kutubas and ikhwan muslimin type uh, du'at, that they are raising their head and they're striking their, their pins uh, at Salafis. This will not work. We're not going to roll over. And we will fight you with the pen and we'll fight you with the tongue. And there's no doubt we'll be victorious because even if as individuals we may fall. And that's because our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لا تزل طائفة من أمتي ظاهرين للحق حتى يأتيهم أمر الله هم على ذلك وفي رواية لا تزل طائفة من أمتي ظاهرين للحق لا يضرهم من خالفهم ولا من خذلهم حتى تكون الساعة So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in Sahih uh, Bukhari and Muslim He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the first uh, narration he said there won't cease to be a group for my nation that's on the truth until the hour is established. In another narration, he said, there won't cease to be a group from my nation on the truth. No one will harm them who differs with them until the hour is established. So that's really glad tidings for Ahlul Sunnah. And that's glad tidings for the strangers. And that's a blow to Khwana Muslimin, Jama'at al-Tabliq, the Ma'tazila, the Ashaira, the Jahmiya, uh, and all these newly invented Mubtadi'a that are around the world. That's a blow to them. Walhamdulillah. So Ibn Rajib, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned about this hadith. He wrote a, a, a very fantastic treatise about this. And I advise myself and my brothers and sisters to read this and benefit from the treatise. But I just want to mention one narration of the Salaf. And he says, and from the words of Ahmed ibn Asim, al-Adaki, Andaki, who was one of the biggest scholars at the time of Suleiman Adarani was. This is what he said. Indeed, I have reached from all the times a time when Islam has returned to being strange as it began. In it, the description of truth has returned to being strange as it began. If you were to turn to the scholar, you would find him being tested with the love of this worldly life and the love for honor and authority. And this is what we were talking about yesterday. And there's no relation as far as I didn't plan this. It just seems like every time I open up a book, Allah keeps showing me different things, you know, because I'm just picking benefits here. SubhanAllah. You will find him being tested with love of this worldly life and love for honor and authority. And if you were to turn to the worshiper, you would find him ignorant in his religion, deceived, and fallen victim to his enemy, Iblis. He is mounted to the highest levels of worship while being ignorant of how to perform them. So how can he be at that level? SubhanAllah. Someone just quoted on my YouTube, a comment about how uh, Sufism is the correct way and you're, you're on misguidance if you're not on Ahlul Tasawwuf. SubhanAllah, look at how some of our classical scholars, and many of them actually, talked about these people who are juhal. How is it that you can be on a higher level <laughs> than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And Wallahi, don't think that Ibn Arabi didn't say these things and other mubtadi'ah mubtadi'a that have bid'a mukafra other mulhideen, people who left Islam, who repelled Islam through their bid'ah mukafra And you're, you're on a higher level? You really know more? You feel better? Yeah, you're going to feel good. If I was on the dance floor doing the twirling around like they do in Turkey, the dervishes, I might feel better too because it's going to get my blood flowing, blood's going to go up to my head, the slobber's going to come down, I can wipe it, but I can still dance and get that groove on. I used to feel good on the dance floor too, but that was prior to Islam. You're going to do that in Islam and you think that's a wasila coming closer to Allah Azza wa Jal? Abedin, abedin. Had a bida, 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 foka bida. And it only will lead you astray. And it only is astray. Wa billah. And it has 
no relationship to ibadah, to seeking to draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if it did, our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam would have showed us that. And our beautiful sahaba radiallahu ta'ala and majma'in would have showed us that. They would have been aware of that. But your awliya, and even this person had the nerve to talk about a wali. Subhanallah. It's just amazing. It, it, it amazes me how these people go so far astray that it's very similar to the priest. But even the priests don't dance and say they're coming closer to their Lord. But yeah, they use their, their priests and they make a new wali, a new saint every year for someone else. They give sainthood and stuff like this. You know, it's almost like a political uh, appointment. But subhanAllah, these people say, La ilaha illallah, go to the graves, sacrifice to the graves, dance around the graves, make tawaf around the graves, say that their, their, their sheikh, anyone who came in his presence, uh, was guaranteed paradise. SubhanAllah, all of this is well documented. Some of the people, they seek barakah from their sheikhs by giving their virgin brides to him first. He's got to taste the nectar. Then she has blessings. Okay, now your marriage is going to be blessed. I bet it is. So shuf how the juhal abidin, those ubad, those, those ignorant worshipers, they worship. Yeah, they do way more worship than a lot of us. In the, they might even do tahajid and do excellent some excellent acts of worship. But it won't benefit them, especially if it has shirk al-akbar. If they're praying to their wali, if they're seeking intercession from the dead, if they're calling the head of their kabail who've been, who's been dead uh, 20 years, and they're supplicating to him, oh, protect the village. Oh, we make istighatha to you. <laughs> La ilaha illallah. And people argue this al ajad. They, they are fierce and stern in their kufr. This is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And that's so strange. Then he said, he has mounted to the highest levels of worship while being ignorant of how to perform them. So how can he be at that level? How can he be at that level? And this is true. I was talking to a brother who is in a position in a particular community, and I won't say, but it's a Sufi community. Okay? He knows what they're on uh, is falsehood. And he told me directly from his mouth that several of the sisters, the young sisters, okay, and this is from the one of the immigrant communities. He's not he's not immigrant, but you know, and I just want to distinguish that because a lot of times they bring in their cultural Islam and they bring in that bidah. The 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 people who are indigenous, they don't know. They began studying Islam through Bukhari and Muslim. They don't know about this stuff. This stuff is what they left in Jahiliyyah. they then they get attracted to becoming a Shia. African American and a extreme Sufi African American and some other Mubtadi'a group. Because the people tala'ib, they play with their minds. So this brother who has position, he told me that some of the young sisters, maybe two or three of them from particular ethnicity, were deceived by the, the major sheikh who would come visit the community. This is an elder, like white, big white beard, you know, big wali, he claims. And they call it, they say that, you know, you're going to, uh, I forgot what the term is, something like get your level up. Because they don't want to refer to it as ibadah because then they know it has to be described as bidah. But there's no way you can elevate your level in Islam except through worship. Everything that's going to elevate you in Islam, related to Islam, means worship. Because you're not going to elevate your status by driving a nice car. That doesn't elevate your status with Allah Azza wa Jal. But if you use that nice car for khair then that can elevate your status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're using it to go to the message. You're using it to deliver the sadaqah goods. You're using it for, uh, to give transport to uh, the people to do khair. Then it can be, as they say, awasail laha ahkam al-maqasid. The means for something takes the same hukum as the ends. So normally, we don't want to get into that. Anyhow, so, Ahabat Fillah, 
So he said, I will share some of that sacred knowledge with you. Come to the house. I'll share some of that sacred knowledge to help you elevate yourself. I don't think we need to say anything further. And this came from a trustworthy source who's in those communities, but he's just not feeling it. But he's still involved in there. May Allah make his affairs easy and bless him with that which is better with Ahl Sunnah. Ameen. And then he said, and the rest of the people are from among the ignorant followers, simple-minded and quick to follow away. Look how people, they rut, you know, subhanAllah, someone just put a, a thing, you know, said, I heard that Imam Bar Barbahari's book is, is not his. Don't you see that? You, you, you're not, can you see? Are you blind? Can you hear? Can you smell it? Can you taste it? Do you have senses? And why do I say that? And I don't mean to be harsh against the, the person who's saying this, but I'm saying, can't you see how the people tala'ib beak? Can't you see how the people play with you? What do they want to do? What do what are these, all these kutubis, ikhwan and muslimin oriented du'at want? They hate when I say that. They hate it. I'm a super Salafi. I'm too extreme. A'udhu billah min hadha. So these people, how do they want to play with you? They want to play with you by undermining the message and the messenger. They can't deal with the substance. Because subhanAllah, when you open Baba Hari's book, you know, he's going to start with Al-Islam, who was Sunnah, was Sunnah, he Al-Islam. You know, he's going to start strong the way Ahl Sunnah was in the past. The Salaf, Minhaj al Salaf, he's going to start with the Sunnah is Islam. And Islam is the Sunnah. That's like the first Ibarra. Wow. They hate that because they want to play with it. So they need to undermine its authenticity, cause doubt about it with the people so the people abandon those kind of books. The people need to focus on milestones from Sayyid Qutb, Wa'iyad and Billah, and other kind of dalal, dalalat. This is what they want to give them, the tarbi of this stuff. The sunnah began strange and... It will return to something strange. Give glad tidings to thee. Strangers. Then he says, And the rest of the people are from the ignorant followers, simple-minded, quick to follow away. They tell you it's not correct this day, so you're going to leave it. They're going to tell you something else, you're going to embrace it. They're going to tell you leave this, you're going to leave it. They're going to cause doubt about people you study with, leave them. So you can come to who? Ahlul Bidah. This is an old ploy. This is, these are classical scholars mentioning this. Perhaps a thousand years ago. Hundreds of years ago. Ala aqal. And look at how, how these, they were worried about their religion and how the people were going astray and how the people were being played with from the, the scholars of Dalal. And then he says, he says, and the rest of the people are from the ignorant follow, simple-minded, quick to follow away. Every time someone ping-pongs you to the right or the left, you go there. As if he were a wolf looking to steal a sheep or hungry lion or a fox on the prowl. This is the description of the people of your time from the carriers of knowledge and the Quran and the callers of wisdom. Imam Ibn Rajib, rahimahullah ta'ala, he, he described this quotation. He said, he commented on this quotation. He said, this was the description of the people of his time. So how much has the situation increased and the crisis become greater after it? Indeed, it has reached a point that would have never been thought of nor imagined. Subhanallah. This was a quote from Hiliyat al-Awliya. And this is, a, 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 this is a, a collection of many, many statements of the Salaf about uh you know every you know all kind of i thought of the salaf okay and about the the attributes of uh of a lot of the uh classical scholars and their taqwa and their wara their their humbleness and piety and so forth and how they you know in statements of them some of it's sahih and some of it's uh, is is not authentic however the point is is look at how relevant that is to our, our time. So, 
my advice to myself and my brothers and sisters, and, and it is advice to me because I'm actually going to try to implement it. I'm, I'm going back into the books of the South. I don't know about you, but that's what I'm going to do for my safety. So we ask Allah Jal the Almighty to bless us with ilm and nafia, wa rizqin tayyiba, wa amalan mutakabbila. And also know, as our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لو اجتمعت أن ينفعك بشيء لم ينفعوك بشيء قد كتبه الله تعالى لك. So if the nations gather together to benefit you with something, they couldn't benefit you with it unless Allah has written it for you. And if they gather together to cause you harm, they cannot cause you harm except with that which Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has written for you. The pen has been lifted and the ink has dried. We ask that Allah protects us, preserves us, forgives us, guides us, blesses us with ikhlas, with the bat, protects us from the tongues and the pins of the people of innovation and desires, especially the honor of our scholars. And may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala uh, turn their plots against them and humiliate and show the, the deviance and expose those people who have deviated in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and deviate the people from the truth. And may Allah bless Ahlul Haqq wa Iman wa Sunnah and bless us to be from amongst them. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad.